Good afternoon. <clears throat> Let's try them again. Good afternoon. <laughs> I guess I hadn't spoken for a couple of a couple of hours. <clears throat> okay, third time. Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily chat. <laughs> this is episode number 980, 986, if you're keeping track. Um, and today's topic is about Valentine's Day, which is actually most of this week's been about that in some ways. Since Valentine's Day is in two days. Yes, two days. And the topic today is basically is how about making Valentine's Day a celebration of being single? Now, I'm saying this for a particular reason, because Valentine's Day is usually pretty stressful for a lot of people. Now, if you're in a relationship, that's one thing, which also gives you stress because you don't get the right gift, the right thing, the right thing to do. But the problem with Valentine's Day, I was talking to a friend of mine a little bit earlier about this, because she and her husband are going up tomorrow night to preempt Valentine's Day. Um, I'll give the, I'll give the singles, get to the single people in a moment. I'll just cover the couples for a moment. Because Valentine's Day is one of the most expensive days of the year to go, go out for dinner, if you didn't know this. There's fixed menus, there's all this pricing stuff. It's extremely expensive. So going out on the day before, day after, is actually normal fee-wise, expense-wise. So why not, I mean, if you want to really spend lots of money on, on Valentine's, day, Valentine's Day particularly, why don't you go another day when you want to go? So for couples, that's that one. Back to singles. Now here's the thing. For a lot of people, sing, Valentine's Day is a painful time to be single. Now either you have memories of Valentine's Days with past loves and you're single now and it sucks, you don't feel happy about it, or maybe you just can't find someone to be with and you just feel frustrated and lonely and upset that you're on Valentine's Day alone. I'll help you fix that. I'll definitely help you fix that really soon. <laughs> so the thing I want to say about Valentine's Day, uh, actually, no, let me, let, let me say this. Let me say you should watch the broadcast from yesterday. I went yesterday, the day before I went to Valentine's Day and, and, and um, dissected it somewhat. The thing about Valentine's Day, it is a very commercialized, created, hallmark type event. It doesn't really have any real value beyond the fact that it creates, it creates a state of panicking people around getting things done right to be romantic. Now, first of all, if you're saving up all your energy with a romantic one day a year, you're doing relationship very, very wrong. And if you're single on Valentine's Day, it's no different to any other day, really, if you really take it that way. Now, yes, it can feel challenging because of all the marketing, promotion, hype, commercials and stuff about Valentine's Day that make it feel real bad if you don't have a partner to be with. And it's something very romantic in quotes because it's not really romantic about finding someone so amazing on the day before valentine's day so you can spend valentine's day in the arms of somebody you can fall in love with although one day relationship isn't really the best way of doing that if you can get from what i'm saying there's a lot of a lot of contrivance and and confusion around this you're on the right track so valentine's day is <sighs> what do i say about it <laughs> there's so much i want to say i have i mean just in case you don't know, I'm a love and relationship coach. I've been for 10 years, more than 10 years now. And I speak about this all the time, but I'm also working with a lot of people who are single, helping them find their way back to self-love, self-support, and self-trust, which is actually something I'll talk, I'll talk about a little bit later. The thing is, is that Valentine's Day sort of turns it upside down in the sense that it makes love through the lens of prescription, prescribed, yeah, prescribed treatments the right thing to do. If you don't do it that way, you're screwing up. That's why being in a relationship can be very challenging on Valentine's Day because there's all this pressure about what society puts on you. So if you're in a relationship, it's a good time to have a good conversation with your partner to say, what do you want to do about Valentine's Day? Like preempt the whole hype with your choices you make for yourself. That's for couples. Back to singles again. I keep doing that, but back to singles again. So Valentine's Day, you know, someone said, you know, Valentine's Day should, my, should be my biggest day of the year. And yes, in past years, I did do marketing of like special deals for Valentine's Day because being a love and relationship coach, it's the most visible day of the year for my business. But I've turned against that. I really have. Because Valentine's Day is, it sucks, <laughs> to be blunt. It's a hyped up thing. And I, I tend to mess with people about Valentine's Day because there's such a <sighs> worn out, cliched perception of Valentine's Day. And I want to speak to something different about it. What I want to speak to, I was realizing that that leaf back there needs to be trimmed. Oh, sorry, <laughs> distracted by my poor plant that's not looking so well. Um, the thing about Valentine's Day is that it is really just, at this point in time, another Friday, because it is Friday this year. And Friday's a nice time to go out socially anyway. But when you have the added pressure that if you're not in a couple, there's something wrong with you, because that's what the perception is, it doesn't make it easy. So my idea about making a Valentine's Day a celebration of being single means to do everything against that, in the sense of that when you're single on Valentine's Day, you celebrate it. 
When you're single on Valentine's Day, you own your space. When you're single on Valentine's Day, you enjoy being with yourself. Or maybe you go out with friends who are also single. Valentine's Day really has, for me, become a... And I mean, I, 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 I want to say it nicely. I'm, uh, let, let, me, let me come back to that one because I, I was going to be nasty. I want to keep it clean. <clears throat> Here's some ideas. As I said before, being single and celebrating yourself, being single, enjoying your life with yourself is a great way to spend Valentine's Day. If you want to do it in a way that would be interesting, because Valentine's Day is all about love and romance, how could you spend Valentine's Day doing loving things for yourself, loving acts? Now, you've, if you haven't done the, love, the five love languages, and most, most people have, I hope, find out what your love language is if you don't know what it is, and then do things to honor that. I said, I said yesterday, we were talking about my, one of my primary, primary love languages is equality time. So what I do for myself is I make sure I have time that I enjoy being with myself. That's a way of honoring and loving myself that it's healthy and in the five love language framework. So I will do that definitely on Friday as well. Yes, I'm single, by the way. Yes, being a relationship coach and being single has always been an interesting conversation starter and sometimes a conversation, conversation ender, just to be clear. So taking time to honor yourself through the filter or the lens of five love languages can be a good way of doing things to start with. Beyond that, or included with that, or adding to that, is to really um, disengage from the hype. Disengage from the hype machine that's out there saying how Valentine's Day should be this, 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 and this. As I said at the beginning, um, to my friend earlier, actually my a neighbor, that she and her husband are gonna go, the, gonna go out the day before Valentine's Day. So if you want to, as a suggestion, why not make this weekend a self-love bonanza? Doing things that you treat yourself. Go out for dinner on your own and celebrate yourself on your own. Go catch a movie on your own. I do that quite often myself. Um, buy yourself a nice gift. Buy yourself some chocolates if you want, if you want to use the, the whole Valentine's hype thing. But see, my point is about really looking at Valentine's Day as a way to spend time with yourself, looking in the mirror and really being present with yourself. Because most people who are single, let me say this, a lot of people are single, let me say not most, a lot of people who are single feel like something wrong with them so they find a partner. They're caught up in this paradigm where, as I said this before in other talks about in Jerry Maguire, the quote, you complete me, runs their life. And it's utter bullshit. Let me be clear about that. Should I say it again? You complete me is utter bullshit. <laughs> I'm bursting people's bubbles about romance right now. But the thing about it that I'm really, um, I not say frustrated with, but I disagree with, is when you have a sense that somebody else is going to make you feel whole, is an incomplete way of living life. You are already whole. You always are, and you always were, you always will be. So remembering your solidarity, your fullness, your ownership of who you are is a great place to start celebrating yourself, which is why I'm saying being single on Valentine's Day is actually a healthy thing to do. I should say a healthy way to act if you do treat yourself with respect, with love, with care. This has been much on my mind because um, in two weeks, just about two weeks now, um, a good friend of mine, Katie, and I are launching our new... Um, Inspired Love, Inspired Love Mastery Mastermind. And there's a lot of stuff I've been writing about it today, so this is what's been on my mind about how to own and claim and, and restore your singlehood. Uh, I don't have a link to put out yet, but I'll, if you're interested, let me message me over social media. Just send me a, a note and I'll, I'll tell you more about it when I have more information. But the thing about it, what, it, what I've been writing down is about how discovering your magnificence, owning your uniqueness, respecting who you are, are powerful and profound ways of of um, celebrating your singlehood because frankly being single nowadays it's worth celebrating yes it's worth celebrating i know people say well no i'm not going to be happy when i'm in a relationship wrong approach be happy now so when you're in a relationship it adds to that but if you're never going to be happy as you're in a relationship you won't be very attractive to your new partner because you won't look happy so celebrate yourself love yourself be honest and happy with who you are now it makes you more attractive more magnetic for what you want that's part of what I do in my work with my clients, is help them really own their space, own themselves, so in, our, in, in the world, they become more magnetic and more visible because they really do love themselves. They're not coming from a place of lack or neediness or wanting something to fill them up. Now, you can have a deep yearning, but that's more hidden inside because that's the feeling of like the crying out for, it's like when you're hungry for food, it's like you know you want that. But it doesn't stop you being whole. It never stops you from being whole. Being fully embraced, fully owned, and fully respected of who you are by yourself. 
and I talked about this in my other talks and I'll talk about it again today, the self-love meditation I created, which is in the comment, I'll put the link in the comments when I sign off, is one of those key components that when you understand how to really respect yourself and look in the mirror and see yourself in your own eyes and appreciate who you are and really fall in love with yourself, then the whole world changes. It's, a, it's the simplest thing in some ways, but it's the hardest thing to do for some people because they've already got so many judgments against themselves. They can't see through them to the true beingness, the true amazing person who's inside because they're, they're being blocked by the rules, judgments, upsets, woundedness, traumas, hurt feelings of things that happened before. None of that stops you being whole though. None of that stops you from being whole. Take that one to heart. If you're carrying around past traumas, wounds, upsets and hurts from past relationships or past experiences, none of that can stop none of that has to stop you from loving yourself. Yes, there's work to do to heal that, absolutely. But the more you love yourself first, as an autonomous, whole, healthy being, then you can focus on and you can speak to those challenges from a much healthier place. I was talking with a friend of mine a couple of days ago, Sunday, how I said that one of the things I learned in my master's program was about how love, how healing is the application of loving to the parts inside that hurt. So if you want to be more whole and you've got wounds and hurt feelings inside from past the emotional upsets, loving yourself first gives you the resource and the power to basically heal by loving yourself. That's why self-love is so powerful and that's why I'm so passionate about it, which is why the link will be in the comments at the end for you to check out. But again, back to Valentine's Day because that's what this talks about. Recognizing that anything you're carrying around is some sense of wound or limitation or upset feelings or feeling like you don't have what you want are distractions from the truth that you already are loving. Because you already are loving, by the way. That's a just like, shh, secret. When you love yourself and own your loving, that's when you start to recognize that everything moves forward. That's why I'm pedantic about loving yourself as a primary step towards having any relationship of any sort. So choose Valentine's Day, if not before, if not, I mean, start today if you want. Start last year if you already have. But start today if not on Friday. With looking in the mirror and seeing how can I love myself more? Asking yourself, how can you love yourself more? What can you do to make your life better? Imagine that you were your relationship partner and things you would say to them, offer to them, suggest to them, take care of them, things you would do for them. Why wouldn't you do that for yourself? One of the biggest things I realized, and, I, and I'm guilty of myself, I did this myself, just to be clear. I'm not saying I'm special or above. I, I learned the lessons, but I know, now know better. But I would spend many times where I would do more for my partner than I do for myself. I would be more caring about taking care of them than I would for myself. I would be more gracious with them than I was for myself. I would judge myself, but not them. All these different things, sound familiar? Your homework. Yes, I'm going to give you homework. For Valentine's Day, before, during, and after, and beyond as much as you want, is to start treating yourself like you would a future partner. Start treating yourself how you would like to love somebody else. Take care of yourself from the point of view that you're the most um, amazing person you've ever met. Respecting and owning your graciousness, your magnificence, your power will change your life. That's the lesson I've been learning again and again. I'm still learning it. I'm not done with it yet by any means. And it could be a continual part of it if you choose it. Again, the mastermind that I'm launching, I'm co-launching at the end of the month with my friend Katie is going to have a lot of this stuff in it. So this is why I'm, it's on my mind right now. But Valentine's Day is a marker. It could be a, it could be a line in the sand, in the, so to speak, of saying from this point forward, I choose to take care of myself. From this point forward, I choose to love myself. From this point forward, I choose to own my, my magnificence in the world. Play with that. That's your homework. Yes, you have homework to do. Oh my God, you didn't know you are going to have homework. You walked into the video. <laughs> this is an opportunity to transform the way you do life. And why not make Valentine's Day the day you start loving being single before you go forward into an amazing relationship down the road? Now, you may not need to be in a relationship. You may not want to be one. But at least treat yourself well as a single person. Let's see if there's anything else. I think that's about. I think that may be about it. I don't, I don't, see, I don't see any questions come through. If you have, by the way, if you have any questions, comments, if you put them in the comments, I'll respond. If I catch it live or in the re replay, I'll respond as well. Um, frankly, Valentine's Day could be a missed opportunity if you don't do this. Valentine's Day is an opportunity to love 
in the mirror versus somebody you don't have in your life. So when you're single, reflect back to yourself how you'd love somebody else. Play with that. That, that could change your life so magnificently if you choose. So that's, my, that's going to be my recommendation. Again, the link will be in the comments for my self-love meditation because that'll help you practice and help you tune in and stay connected to yourself inside. And if you do that, your life is going to be amazing going forward. If you have any questions about that mastermind I mentioned, send me a message over social media and I'll, I'll give you some more information when, once I have it. Still putting that together. Um, I think that's going to be about it for today's topic. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, by the way, this is my daily Facebook Live. I do every day, seven days a week, right here on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Um, usually it's 5 p.m. Pacific time, it's my go time, unless something happens and I'm doing something else. But 90% of the time, it's at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Join me live or watch me in replay. Speaking of replays, you can watch me on my business page on Facebook or on my YouTube channel. I'm in both places for certain reasons. Business page on Facebook is barryselby.author, where you can like my page and follow me there. But YouTube, do sorry, Facebook doesn't show all of my broadcasts, all, seven, all 960, 980 of them. It only shows about two or 300 because Facebook doesn't like showing everything for some reason, which is why I have a backup plan, which is my YouTube channel. So if you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can subscribe to my channel, please. And there's a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. And that's where every single one of broadcasts is visible, searchable, um, reviewable, and commentable. That sounds good. <laughs> so check those out as well. Um, if you have any questions, comments, again, let me know in the comments. If you want more information about what I do and how to work with me as well, message me as well. The self-love meditation will be in the comments directly, so you can just tap on that, start, sign up today, and use it. And uh, that'll be about it. I appreciate you watching, and I hope you take this to heart. Loving yourself, especially on Valentine's Day, is a powerful choice, a wise choice, and a healthy choice for the love you want to have in your life. I thank you for being with me as always. I'll see you again same time, same, ta same time tomorrow, the day before Valentine's Day. Um, and as always, as a reminder, please, take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.